So uh, today in this video we're gonna cover a dinosaur. Uh, I usually don't do dinosaurs but my kids are in dinosaur age so I've, I did cover the dinosaurs with them and this is one of the videos I've recorded. So this is a velociraptor if you don't know. Uh, I'm gonna go through how I'm gonna draw composite. Uh, it's important uh, making sure the drawing looks correct before you start putting in the paint. I'll show how I put in some volumes and then we'll explain how it goes. Um, and then the whole painting is done by multiple layers so you slowly build the painting by first layer, second layer. Depending on how complex the painting is, it could be three or four or more layers. Stick around, it's going to be fun. Okay, so we're going to start doing a Velociraptor. I believe this one is a character called Blue from Jurassic World. So I don't have copyrights, so I'm not going to show the image, but you're happy to Google Velociraptor. I guess this is the first image which comes in. And also this is the image what my kids have chosen. So I quickly start putting in some volumes. Yeah? So the volumes are uh, potato shapes. It could be potato shapes or it could be boxes, depending on what you're comfortable with, before adding any details. So I'm uh, drawing as light as possible. There's a couple of things I'm uh, making sure. One, the position is correct so that it fits all the whole body is within the frame. And the second thing is I'm just blocking in some shapes just to know where the legs are, where the hands are, and so forth and so forth. And then you can see my kids are very excited that I'm doing a dragon and then they've got all sorts of ideas what I should be doing and what I shouldn't be doing. Okay. So now I've once the volumes, I'm happy with the volumes. I'm still using a very light pencil um, and I'm making it as a, a box uh, so that it's a lot more easier. I'm drawing the eye line here, the mouth, and slowly doing a little more details. So it's, it's a box basically, I'm seeing where the eyes are, the eyes for the Velociraptor is usually like an alligator, it's quite on top, so I think it helps in visual, I have no idea uh, whether it's real or is it uh, made for movies. So you can already see there is like a rough shape done and I'm darkening the lines as and when I'm getting more confident that these are the lines I'm happy with. So and slowly moving towards the body. I got two kids they are very keen to see dinosaurs so I might uh, do a few more dinosaur paintings. Uh, I didn't realize there's uh, so many YouTube videos just doing different dinosaurs for kids and for all sorts of ages, so I might be tempted depending on how it goes. So I'm adding more details. The front paws or uh, the small hands. So I don't know whether you notice that I usually, usually draw a, a center line so that it guides me where the muscle mass should go. Between the arms there is a center line so it tells me direction and then also where the focus should be. So as I draw I'm getting more and more confident about the strength of the lines. and now the hind legs. So it starts with the biggest muscle and the knee and um, the last part. So 
uh, and uh, the drawing looks like a velociraptor I think it's just the, the volume and the shape and when you start drawing the curves also makes a big difference so if you draw the curve straight the body looks straight so you want to um, draw reflecting the shape of the of the animal or the contours okay so the last leg So, but this is an approach I tend to use for anything which uh, I haven't practiced or haven't done is to start with simple volumes, composite correctly and then slowly increasing the intensity of the pencil on the correct lines. So if this was going to be a clean drawing, I would uh, take a light box and then um, trace the fine lines to just to get a really clean drawing. At this stage, I'm not happy with the, the head. I'm just gonna tweak it a little more. The a bump of the eye. Oh, and it surprisingly has a big eye for the body. Suggests that they're excellent hunters. suggesting what I should be doing and other things that's always funny to draw probably this is the first drawing or painting I'm drawing with the kids they're super excited and this is a voiceover if I had left the original audio there's a lot of uh, sound in the background so I'm not sure oh. Probably I will cut the video just to get to the place where I'm painting. Okay. So a small brush. I'm not going to clean the palette, it's just I'm just picking up colors which might be a representative of the colors. So that one is just a bluish, I think gray with a little bit of Algerian red. And I, I usually test the colors before I start going deep. So I'm happy with that particular color. I'm just uh, using a Japanese calligraphy brush there. Still a lot of control and still a lot of liquid so you want a best of both worlds so you want enough fluid and pigment and the control of the painting so for the size of this painting it's very easy easily you can cover most of the painting within a few seconds and if you notice I'm holding the brush a lot more closer because I want more precision the more the precise the closer I hold to the tip of the toothbrush a toothbrush paintbrush so I'm just picking up the gray has a tint of Algerian red I'm having some tissue, there's a little more, too much liquid, I don't want it to start running. It's handy to have a little bit of tissue for control. And I'm going to be drying this painting multiple times because it has a unique texture. So I want to try to do it um, wet on wet or dry the painting before I get that.
Okay, so ultramarine blue. While the paper is still wet, I just want it to bleed in. So I'm dabbing the color and also a little bit lavender, mix with lavender. A little bit of pyrrole red, vermilion. I'm going to just tackle the eye first. The inside the mouth. So I'm using a little bit of burnt umber and raw umber. The raw umber is a very translucent color, so it's it's got especially when you're doing layers, translucent colors like a, a raw umber. So pay attention the way I'm drawing those stripe marks. Um, allowing it to define the contours or the muscle masses. So you can make the dinosaur look flat or you can make it look 3D by the way you orient the curves. So that when you look at the neck, I've kind of curved it and it's going down. So you know the muscles are So I'm still using burnt umber, but I'm just paying attention for the curves, which in my opinion might break or make a painting by using the right way of the curves. So it's the second drawing. So if, if you haven't already guessed, the whole painting, especially illustration other things, is multiple layers. So you build on from one layer and then you I'm adding the shadows, in this case the lights from the top and the underbelly is going to have a lot more shadows. Adding a little more red, Algerian red. Uh, 
adding some more darker highlights. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. So a Velociraptor, uh, you saw how I did the drawing, making sure that it's correct. And then I slowly built the character layer by layer. So I hope you enjoyed. And then this is the same technique you could use for any illustration or any drawing. This is basically a watercolor technique you could use for anything. Uh, this is uh, very handy. Uh, and then also, I just want to plug in, there's a new Skillshare or a Udemy course coming in uh, where I'm going to go through color theory, drawing and a full course uh, for somebody who absolutely don't know where to start watercolors, that is the course. I'm going to probably plug in a, a link below the video and uh, if you like the video please help me out, subscribe uh, or if you want to buy me a cup of coffee in Patreon, you can do that. Till next time, keep watercoloring and hope.